welcome back. Today I am making three little coin envelopes using some scraps of coffee dyed paper and this is a really easy way to make coffee or not coffee coin envelopes and you basically just fold them in about thirds and you want to make sure the one side is slightly overlapping the other because that's where you're going to end up gluing. So basically what I'm doing here is just folding them into thirds and I'm going to fold the top and the bottom up and you just want to fold it up as far as you think you want the flap. So on the bottom I do it pretty small and then the top I do just a little bit wider so that I have a bit more of a depth on the top it, and you know it kind of depends on just what you're trying to do and then I'm just going to snip off this excess so that when you fold everything you don't have a lot of bulk on your folds. So I'm just trimming at the slight angle and then I am trimming off the top and the bottom pieces and I do that on both of these little envelopes here and I just kind of adjust and trim until I get everything lining up like I want it to. Then I'm going to take my Vintage Photo Distress ink and I'm just going to ink around all the edges of the envelope and then I'm going to glue it down. I'm just using my fine liner bottle with some scotch tacky glue in it and then that's really nice stuff because it does put a really fine line down and then you don't get a lot of mess and if you don't use very much of it it doesn't really warp, warp the paper. So now I kind of like how these look. I also have a little guy right here as well, and I'm just inking that one up too. And then now I'm gonna move on to decorating the coin envelopes. So I have some scraps. I can't remember who I got these from. These are just been kind of sitting on my desk in my stash. I can't remember if it's from Love Junk Journals or not, uh, but it's kind of like a ledger, like a distressed ledger paper, and it thought would look nice with some um, of that in the background. So I'm just taking my glue stick and then gluing this down, and then just smushing everything down with my little key card. And sometimes I'll wrap around the paper, and sometimes I will trim it off. It just kind of depends on how it's going to look on the other side and what I'm kind of trying to, to make it look like. So I will trim these down either with my ruler or just by tearing it with my fingers. And then I do put some distress ink around the edges. I just like how that separates the different layers of paper from the envelope. I'm just going to use my ruler here. Again, just ripping it, making it fit the way I want it to. I really like that darker edge there on the top, so I wanted to keep that. Just using my glue stick and glue book and then just getting this down. This one I am going to trim off. I didn't want it to wrap around. I just didn't really like how it looked. So I end up just tr trimming that off. So next I am going to look at some little pieces of femur or die cuts and I'm going to be pulling these from the snippet collection from Love, Love Junk Journals. And I have that little circle that has like they're like poppies maybe and then this other tag shape that has a white flower on it. I will trim that out and ink around all the edges and then I also use my little brush tool to brush on some ink as well. I just thought it was a little too white and I wanted to tone it down just a bit and that brush tool is really nice because it just adds a light coating of the ink without being overwhelming whereas when you use the sponge applicator it's a much darker impression. So now these are all inked up and I'm just kind of playing around where I think they might look good on the coin envelopes. And I decided that I needed a bit more layering of paper. So I'm just pulling out more pieces that have been trimmed off from the paper that I've been using and then just gluing that down wherever I think it looks best. And then once I have it the way I want it, then I will start gluing down the images. This is washi tape that I've had in my stash for a little bit. It is kind of a wheat color and it kind of has a wheat kind of um, motif on it and I really like the look of that. It brings in a little bit of color but it's subtle and so I think that looks nice with these because most of the colors that I have in this collection that I'm using are pretty subtle but I do think it's nice to have a little pop of color here and there um, because a lot of the papers and things that I have either have the vintage distress ink on them or they're coffee dyed so there's a lot of brown in neutral tones. So having this little pop of color in a neutral color I think just really adds a lot to the different um, elements that I make or that I'm making. So I'm really liking how that looks so I'm gonna start gluing down these little tags and circles. Again just using my glue stick and then smooshing them down. This was a cardstock that I cut the circle out of so I wanted to use a little bit thicker glue or a heavier start duty glue so I am using my scotch tacky glue on those. Like I said they are cardstock as opposed to just copy paper. So I do want to use a little bit stronger adhesive on that. 
So now I'm pretty happy with how this looks on the front at this point and so I'm going to turn these over on the back and start embellishing the back of these and I actually end up going back to the front and I will add a bit more towards the end of the video. Just kind of measuring how I want this, I figured on these I wanted to, oh sorry, I am going to work on the inside first. I do do a little bit of decorating I believe if I'm remembering correctly on the back but I'm just going to work on the inside right now. So I just kind of roughly measure that, use a pencil and then rip it with my ruler. This paper is nice because it has lines on it so it's pretty easy to rip it pretty straight. Now that's just copy paper so I want to make sure that it is a little bit more sturdy so I'm just taking this Tim Holtz packaging and then gluing it down and then I'll trim around the outside of the paper using my ruler again and then I really like how this uh, packaging looks so it's perfect to upcycle it. I always keep the Tim Holtz packaging because it always has that distressed kind of grungy look and always looks great with some of my ephemera that I'm using and the kits. So here now the tag is much more stable so it's going to fit in and out of that little coin envelope much easier. So just testing out a couple times making sure it really is going to fit on there and now I'm going to decorate this up a bit. This is a die cut that I stamped and then I die cut with the Tim Holtz die cut pack. I can't remember Oh, I can't remember the name of it. If you guys are interested in knowing what the kit is or what the um, die cut set is, then let me know in the comments below and then I can look that up for you and get that information to you. Here's just another scrap piece of paper. I kind of like that organic kind of look of it. I do think it's a little bit bumpy on the right, so I am going to trim it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to ink around all the edges so the white doesn't show. And then glue that down and I think that gives a nice space for that little moth to sit on and then it also gives you a little bit of journaling space. Not much but if you want to do like a little quote or something I think this is the perfect spot for that. Just using my Fabri-Tac or my 3-in-1 adhesive from Beacon for this and I kind of go back and forth on the adhesive. Sometimes I use the tacky glue from Scotch, sometimes I'll use the Beacon. I like the Beacon glue because it does keep your images and things like that or your paper from buckling but the tacky glue is nice too it just like I said it just kind of depends depends on how big of a surface that I'm going to be gluing on what I am using as far as like paper is it a cardstock or is it more of a copy paper that will determine whether I use a glue stick or the beacon glue or scotch quick dry or tacky glue I'm sorry so now I didn't this was a uh, envelope that I tried to make that didn't look very good so I'm just trimming off the edges and then now I'm going to put this on this here and just making or not put it on it but it will be the tag that goes inside of it so I am going to glue this down and this time I actually am going to cut not all the way up towards the edge of this paper I'm going to leave a little bit of space and I don't mind that some of the image is showing here on the side I think once you ink it up and you put it in it just looks like another layer of paper so I think that looks nice and it just made this tag a little bit bigger the paper that I was using was a little small so I wanted to make it just a little bit bigger and that's why I ended up trimming kind of a border around so you can see once I ink this up you can't even barely tell that it had that image on the other side now I do have a little bit of cut on this paper from when I cut out the other tag so I'm just covering that up with a little bit of collage paper and then you never know that it got torn there. Again just inking around the edges and things. Trimming it and then inking it again and now I want to add another image just looking through some of the different pieces in the snippet collection and I decided that I like this butterfly a little bit better than the dragonfly and I don't have a punch that's quite this size so I am hand cutting it which is not super great <laughs> because I don't have the best ability of cutting circles by hand but it ended up turning out not too bad. Once you ink it actually I think it, it makes it look a little more wonky than if I didn't ink it but I, I'm okay with it. It is a handmade journal so being a little bit wavy is not terrible. Then I'm just using my Scott or my Beacon 3-in-1 again to glue that down because I wanted to make sure I didn't buckle. And then I thought I needed a little bit of journaling lines, just a really old stamp. And I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink then to stamp this down. I wanted this to be very, very subtle and not take up a bunch of visual space, but also be nice to have some lines there so when you journal, you can um, journal in a straight line. 
So now I'm looking, I decided that I did trim this tag just a little smaller than the depth of the pocket. So I want to add a tab to the top here. So I'm just trying to look through my pieces of paper to try to find something that I think is going to look nice on this card. And that's just a Fisker's punch that I think it's Oh, it's really, really old. I'm not sure if they make this one anymore. I don't have the tab punch. I do want one of those. That'd be really nice to have. But right now I just have this in my stash and it works. It's a little bit smaller than the tab punch. And I think it looks nice. So I found some paper that I thought was going to look nice with this card. I'm just using my glue then to glue the tab on. And then I think that fits in the pocket pretty nicely. I do see that it's a little bit too tall. So I'm just kind of smushing that down to make sure that everything fits in the little envelope without it getting bent up once the envelope is closed. So that one is done. And now I have just this little guy. And all I'm going to do with this one is add a little one of these little tags from the Stippet collection and it also needed to be backed because it needs to fit in and out of that envelope without bending. So before I actually trim it I am going to add glue first and then when I trim it I can trim everything at once instead of trimming it twice. And this works really nice too. Sometimes I forget to do this but it's a really good tip so that you can cut everything so that's the same and you're not you know taking up a lot of time by cutting the image multiple times once when you trim it out and then once when you back it. Just adding a bit of Distress Ink here around the edges to tie everything together and that's going to fit in really nice. I decide I do want to put a little hole at the top and add some twine. I'm just going to add some brown and white Baker's twine to this. And I just think that gives a cute little touch and also gives you a little thing to kind of pull the tag out of the pocket with. And then these are some words that I typed up on my typewriter using a scrap piece of a coffee dyed paper. And I'm just snipping these up and then putting them on the different tags, the pockets and such. And so you'll see me adding these to a couple of different places. This one just says wildflower. And that's a nice thing about having a, a typewriter in my kind of craft area. I can just kind of type up on these scraps peeps of paper. You can make the words be whatever you want. So if you're doing a nature journal, you can type them up about nature. If you're doing a Halloween one, you can type up Halloween words. So it's really nice to have a little typewriter in your craft area to be able to do this. Um, if you don't have a typewriter, you can get a typewriter font for your computer and do it the same way. And that works just as well. I actually, there's a, one of the typewriter fonts that I found on defont.com is called vintage I think or veteran veteran typewriter and that looks a lot like this um, typewriter font that I have here so just picking out a few words that I thought would look nice and I'm just gonna add them around on these tags and that's pretty much it just showing you what they look like and thank you guys so much if you liked the video please give me a thumbs up if you haven't already please subscribe thanks again for coming by and I will see you and talk to you again next time have a great day everyone bye bye